in games like Uncharted or Tomb Raider, you move crates to reach higher ledges. In the Division or Ghost Recon, you hack terminals to trigger events. They are called Smart Objects. In this video, we're exploring exactly how they work and why your players can't use them yet in Unreal Engine. More about that last part later. At Unreal Fest Orlando 2025, CD Projekt Red showcased their Witcher tech demo. There's this one scene in the marketplace that perfectly demonstrates what smart objects can do. The customer NPC stands at the fish market stall. The fish merchant responds, they interact and money changes hands. Looks like a normal game interaction, right? Here's what's actually happening. That market stall is a smart object. They're both interacting with the same object at the same time. And the system is managing who does what and when. No hand-scripted animation sequences. No hard-coded interactions. Just smart objects doing their thing. Keep the market stall in mind. It's going to make perfect sense in a minute. I'm going to show you how to create a mounted weapon using smart objects. This was inspired by a recent conversation. An NPC will be able to find this weapon, walk up to it and use it to attack the player. You'll need these plugins enabled in your project. Smart objects the core system. AI behaviors. This handles AI interaction logic. Gameplay behavior smart objects. This bridges the two together. Here's how smart objects are structured. There are four main pieces to this puzzle and they all connect together. Game behavior blueprint. This is where you define what happens when the smart object is used. Think of this as the action part of your smart object. In our mounted weapon example, this is where we set up the logic for playing the mount animation, enabling weapon controls, firing at targets and playing the dismount animation when done. For now, let's keep it simple. When the NPC uses the smart object, the mounted weapon attacks. Game Behavior Config Blueprint, this one's straightforward. It's essentially a wrapper that references the game behavior you just created. Smart Object Definition, this is where everything comes together. First is the behavior definition. Here you can reference the game behavior and game behavior config blueprints you just created. This sets the default behavior for the entire smart object. Next are slots. Each slot represents a position or role that an NPC or player can occupy when interacting with the smart object. Remember that fish market from earlier? The merchant has one slot. The customer has another slot. Both are interacting with the same market store, the smart object, but they're using different slots. When a slot is claimed, it becomes unavailable until it's released by the occupant. For our mounted weapon, we only need one slot. For each slot, you can configure user tag filters, activity tags and behavior definitions. User tag filters. Here you choose who can use the slot, only enemies, only friendlies, or both. You define this with gameplay tags. Activity tags. 
This is where you choose what kind of activity is this. Is it a cover position, weapon emplacement, or a workstation? Tag it here. Behavior definitions. Here's where you can assign different behavior to different slots. In our case, we have one slot with one behavior. Use the mounted weapon. Finally, you create the smart object actor itself. This is the physical thing that exists in your level. In our case, the mounted weapon. You create a new actor blueprint. Add whatever meshes, components or visual elements you want. Then you add a smart object component. In that component, reference the smart object definition data asset you just created. Your mounted weapon is now a fully functional smart object. So we've built it. But how does an NPC actually find this thing and use it? This is where the smart object subsystem comes in. Think of it as Google for smart objects. When your NPC needs to find a mounted weapon, you call the find smart objects function. You pass in two things, a query box and a filter. A query box defines the search area. The filter is where those user tag filters and activity tags we set up earlier come into play. Your NPC is essentially asking, are there any smart objects nearby that I'm allowed to use that have available slots and then match whatever I'm looking for? The subsystem searches your level in the query box while checking every smart object against your criteria and returns an array of matches. Important to note is that smart objects with no available slots are automatically excluded. Once you have your array of smart objects, you typically grab the nearest one. The NPC reserves the slot by claiming it preventing anyone else from using it. Thereafter, the NPC moves to the slot and uses the smart object. When done, the slot is released and becomes available again. In our example, the NPC finds the mounted weapon, walks over to it, mounts it and starts attacking the player. All managed by the smart object system. Hit the like button if you find this valuable and share your thoughts in the comments below. Right now, smart objects are NPC only. Players can't use them. Epic is still building out the player facing side of this system. So for now, your players get to watch NPCs man turrets, sit in chairs and interact with the world while standing there like awkward spectators. If you'd like a more hands-on experience for your NPC, watch this video on how to evolve your NPC beyond hand-to-hand -hand combat and I'll see you there.